We'll get the rotor nice and red hot and see what happens when we douse it with a huge amount of water from a pressure washer and such. A quick break in for these brake rotors. Hey guys, today we're going to be using our Supra for some experiments. Right here I've got myself a set of brake rotors, which we'll use for something we've wanted to do for quite a while now, which is overheat the brakes and uh, see what happens to them. The premise is very simple. Let's assume you're driving in the city. In the rain you make an emergency stop. You are driving in a spirited manner with your brakes becoming almost red hot. And all of a sudden you hit a deep puddle. What'll happen to your rotors? There are some people out there who think that brake rotors grenade in those conditions when you come to a sudden stop. Well, and that's what we'll be testing. One of these is in pretty decent condition. I mean, it does look a bit suspect. It has seen some mileage. The other one we doctored a bit and it is pretty much completely worn out. This one is going to be easy to get red hot. So we'll compare what happens to a good brake rotor and one that is completely rooted when they're subject to rapid cooling. Let's throw them on and get them up to temperature. Fellas, I'd just like to say thank you for your support and for your kind words. I'm well now and everything's good. Now you yourselves take care and make sure to take all of the necessary precautions given the situation we're in. Now the latest addition to our online shop are these lovely face masks that'll help keep you safe from all sorts of nasty infections. Now at the moment it's August and the rainy autumn season is right around the corner, meaning it's time to buy some warm clothing. We're offering you guys these fantastic hoodies from our shop. And as of recently we've also got these awesome vests for sale. On top of that we've got a bunch of other stuff and we're always adding something new to the product line. For example, not too long ago we began to offer these nifty lighters and air fresheners. So go ahead and give our online shop a visit. Get yourself some G54 merch. And when using the code from the video description, you can buy some stuff at a good discount. What happens when you drench a brake rotor translation and voiceover by BMI Russian? We've assembled the brake mechanisms and fitted some spacers in order to secure the rotors. Now we'll do a quick check to see whether we have a wobble. We need to work out from the get-go whether they're straight or they're warped. One of them seems to be warped. But which one? Well, let's go have a closer look. Two hundred degrees. Oh wow! I've been running them with the handbrake slightly engaged for literally half a minute. And the thermometer is already showing us 200 degrees Celsius on the left rotor. This one is at 140. Well, it had some time to cool off. We've worked out that this rotor is warped. We've already got a wobble. We're going to save it for later and keep the caliper detached for the time being. As for the other one, it's in good working condition. When testing it with a wrench, we can tell that it is completely straight. No vibrations to report. So this one is good. No sign of it being warped yet. Now we wind the engine up and see how high the temperature gets. Four starters. We won't be dousing it with water. Let's try this in sixth gear. That's top gear and now I pull on the handbrake. I don't feel anything wobbling. A bit more force and the engine is loaded up to the point of almost stalling. Let's try getting it hot. It's on fire. Don't put it out. Very nice. It's nice and red hot. The brake pad is on fire. 
I'm gonna go give it some more gas to help it cool down, to keep the caliper from burning to a crisp. How long was that, like 30 seconds or even less? The engine had no trouble spinning in sixth gear and heating the brake rotor until it became red. Something tells me the car is gonna need a new set of brakes. The calipers aren't taking to this very well. The pads are still good. That wasn't enough time to completely wear them down. Let's leave it alone and allow the rotor to cool off naturally. That'll take at least 10 minutes. Nothing should happen to our rotor in good condition, even if severely overheated when given time to cool off. That appears to be the case. Even at a glance, it seems to be completely straight. It hasn't developed any ripples. There weren't any to begin with. That's 160 degrees. Now let's squirt a bit of water onto it imitating splashes from a puddle, making it onto the rotor. The temperature is dropping rapidly. The water isn't even sizzling when splashing onto the rotor. On top of that, the wheel is rotating as if the car were still moving. That's 95 degrees. Right now you're seeing how fast the rotor dissipates heat. Now I suggest we bring the temperature up to about 300 and cool it off in the same exact manner. I pump it up first. Plenty of steam generated by the rotor. I'm still seeing 200 degrees. The rotor doesn't want to cool off. So this would seem to be simulating a scenario when you're not so much going through a puddle, but driving on a soaking wet road. Now we get to the hardcore stuff. Let's assume we came to a sudden stop from 100 kilometers an hour. The brakes are at 500 degrees. Why that number in particular? Well, our temperature gauge only goes up so far. We essentially drive into a puddle and come to a grinding halt. We are at... Indicated 523 degrees. Our rotor has changed its color. Throw it into neutral. Brake. Time for a bath. The rotor is repelling the water with how fast it begins to boil. It's a sort of Russian steam bath effect. This has to be one of the worst scenarios you can find yourself in on the road. I've poured four liters of water onto it. And that brought the temperature down to 100 degrees. So that's a 400 degree drop in just 10 seconds. I think it's within an inch of its life. That's enough. Careful. A bucket of water wasn't enough. The rotor is still very red. We'll douse it with another bucket full of water. Though the temperature drop is way more significant than if the car were just standing there. You can already see where the connection points are between the two halves of the rotors. They need more time to cool down. The heat spots are clearly visible. We've got smoke coming from the caliper. Let's make it all the way cold. All right, the water is barely even boiling. Let's check the temperature. That's 68 degrees where the water made contact, good. I see cracks around the entire surface of the rotor. This one is already full of brake pad material, which made it a bit hard to catch from a distance. Now, when I tested it with a wrench, I heard some nasty clicking. Yeah, this brake rotor is absolutely not fit for use. 
but it's still intact, so let's try increasing the temperature differential even further. Let's turn up the heat. Keep your distance. One more time. One more. This huge bucket wasn't enough to cool the rotor. The rotor has cooled off and now we have two cracks. One is at least two millimeters wide. The other is about a mil. And there might be even more cracks on the inside. Yo, can you put it into first for me? No, that's not enough. Give me a second. Stay at idle. The rotor is completely warped, which makes sense given all the cracks. The caliper is even wobbling. There is no way this kind of rotor will stop a car. Time to spray it with water. The brakes have started to fade. Everything is on fire as usual. Time to put that fire out. My oh my. That's it? We can't continue using it. It's melted so horribly that... You can't even really call it a brake rotor. We have removed the brake rotor after those brutal experiments. And we have destroyed it. We could have gone even further, but that would have spelled some fatal consequences for the car itself, I'm afraid. Wouldn't want to damage the shell. So this is what happens to a brake rotor subject to torture testing. Then again, you know, the rotor has held up beautifully. As best it could, I reckon. Same goes for the brake pads, which are terribly disfigured, by the way. They're even a different shape than they used to be. They look like a double half moon, I guess. 
The pads we are going to have to throw away, of course. In the meantime, we went out and bought this new rotor for 2,500 rubles. This is the cheapest one we could find for a Supram. Like, literally the lowest grade part they had in stock. The markings do say Toyota, Japan, something or another, but I don't see a single indication of it actually being made in a real Japanese factory. We are absolutely positive that this rotor is of Chinese origin, but let's try it out, shall we? And now we repeat the experiment under the same exact conditions. First, we try getting it hot to the point where it just starts to get slightly red. Immediately, I can tell that it isn't warped. Good. Let's try this out. What an awful stench. The rotor has gone slightly blue and, um, oh my, that can't be good. I can hear some scraping. I have a feeling that we've already warped it. I guess we can call this a quick break-in for these brake rotors. Okay, it's no longer making that noise. As if it has smoothened out. Now we quickly heat the rotor to about 300 degrees and pour an entire bucket of water onto it, just like we did with that used rotor before. Let me know when it hits 300, Sergei. The rotor is at 300 degrees, now we pour 5 liters of water onto it. Lovely! The rotor has cooled down, the car is in gear. Let's see how it's doing back there. You know what? You can tell just by looking at it that the rotor is warped. I take it that's... an indication that it might be feeling a bit sick. Okay, if we look really carefully, we notice that some tiny cracks have already started to form. A 300 degree drop in temperature has already severely damaged the rotor. Using this rotor as it is might become a bit unpleasant. Now, I doubt that it's on the verge of falling apart. I'm pretty sure that under normal driving conditions it should be able to last quite a long time. Okay, and now it's on to the next experiment. We'll get the rotor nice and red hot and see what happens when we douse it with a huge amount of water from a pressure washer and such. Okay, let's put some heat into that rotor and cool it off rapidly. The whole thing is on fire. I'm gonna pop it out of gear and cool everything off. And we've got some immediately apparent results. Then again, what else should we have expected? This was a new rotor, but right away we've got... 
cracks forming. Oh, this one looks way worse than that other one. It's at least one and a half to two millimeters. That's one crack. Two. I take it these are the same small cracks that formed during the first round. When we brought the temperature up to 300, they just continued to get bigger and... Uh, the temperature difference turned out to be too much. We're on fire, and it looks pretty bad. So we were able to put out the fire, but things have gotten so much worse. The engine is even having trouble turning it idle with the rotor getting stuck. The caliper looks like it's about to pop out. Nope, that's not just me. The rotor is actually hitting the dust shield. Let's remove it and see what's left of it. Maybe compare it to the other one. The leftover material on the pads is a telltale sign that this rotor has been through much less pain than the other one. There's more of it, and the temperatures don't seem to have been that extreme. I mean, these are completely burned out, while here you've still even got some writing left. As for the condition of these rotors, well, they look about the same. There doesn't seem to be that big of a difference between them. In both cases, they are absolutely boned. The cracks are about the same size. Also, let's make note of the fact that the new rotor was much thicker to begin with, which is especially obvious when looking at the two of them right now. In our situation, that is definitely a good thing. So neither one of these rotors fell apart. The car didn't sustain any severe damage. Both the OEM and the Chinese knockoff have fared okay. No damage is a good thing, I am quite happy with that. As for how they've dealt with the temperature differentials, I'd say this old OEM rotor was the best out of these two. The used one. The one that we had in our parts bin. The new one, well, that started cracking and warping much earlier. As soon as we got the temperature up to 300 degrees Celsius. This one only began to disintegrate at temperatures well in excess of 500 degrees. It took getting red before the first crack appeared on its surface. Now, personally, I'm convinced that the best parts you can buy for your car are the ones they installed at the factory. If you have the means to buy that great of part for your car, well, I'd definitely support your decision to go with that option. You can't go wrong with OEM. Hopefully we all come to the right conclusions here. And that'll be all for this one. Thanks for watching, see you later.